it's the year of return, and uh, I like to call T. Michael as one of the returnees. I remember I did an article on him uh, some few days ago, and the response was amazing. Uh, most of you didn't know who he was, but the fact that he had achieved so much uh, was something that was very encouraging uh, for, or inspiring for most of you. So the good thing is he's here, finally. Uh, so, Michael, yes. what brings you back home? Um, I told this guy he's a killer will and a watch here, but <laughs> it's more than that. It's um, it's a little bit more than that. I've been away for a little bit, and um, I just felt it was it was time to um, get a feel of what was going on in Ghana. You know? When was your last time here? That was nine years ago, so mm -hmm. it was. Um, I think it's about time, yeah. And yeah. so far, what do you see different from your last trip? Oh, so much differences. I mean, visually, obviously, I think mentality as well has changed. Um, I think the creative scene is vibrant as ever. Um, I think there's there's so much going on, and and I've only been here for two days, so I'm very optimistic and, and very <laughs> full of uh, full of energy to to try and get hold of everything that's going on. Um, that's a very sort of um, um, ambitious goal, but as much as I can, anyway. Yeah. Great. Mm. So your professor says you're Ghanaian origin and origin Ghanaian. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking you a born there. No, no, no. I'm I'm from Accra. Uh, so, I'm from Accra. I used to uh, live in. Uh, London before and I moved to Norway um, and now the world is like I work everywhere uh, right. practically uh, we have stores in four different cities and we have um, stores that we uh, wholesale to in many more cities so that gets you around a little bit um, but um, you know there's, there's always a crown in, in Accra man you know what I mean so great great and how, how did it start for you um, it's it started you know because I was interested in clothing and I spent practically all the money I didn't have on clothing. And to get to the point, I thought, why not actually uh, invest a bit of time in it and, and try and understand how clothing is made and so on and so forth. So I took a course in tailoring uh, many, 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 many years ago. Uh, did it for four years. And, and when I finished. That was in London? That was, that was not in London. I was working clothes in London, but I was in Norway. And when I finished, I decided to open my studio um, practically. 10 days after that um, and I did and I opened it on my 30th birthday it was like a, a, a benchmark I was saying okay this is me this is me in the 30s this is what I wanted to achieve um, obviously fast forward to today and there's so much good things that's been done but it's not overnight you know I've, I've worked on this for quite a while um, I've been doing this for like maybe 26 27 years now I opened up my studio in 96, which is um, 24 years ago. Um, but the most um, still do is the fact that you've got to be passionate about something. With a passion, everything else seems a little bit less difficult. Uh, and then you've got to be motivated. Passion without motivation is like dreaming, you know what I mean? So you've got to have the passion, you've got to be motivated, and then you have to put in hours. And then after that, you should expect to fail as well because it's not as easy as it is. And then you just have to keep doing it. And eventually, things will fall in place for you because you are being so consistent that people start noticing what you do. People come back, people asking, oh, do you know this guy? Have you seen his work? And then, and then the word is spreading around within the right people. And then eventually, you become relevant. And relevancy is what sells your products. You know, so... It's, that's how it all started, and it's still, what I still do is still based on the same philosophy I had back in the day. I like to create things from a traditional point of view, but I don't want it to look like something that my dad will wear. I want it to look <laughs> like something I will wear, you know, that's the whole idea. Yeah. Good. So uh, take us through the Team Michael mm. uh, brand. Uh, I realize you have uh, the ring code range. Correct. Uh, and all of that to right. through it. So I'll walk you through. I mean, we, we, um, I do um, raincoats together uh, with my business partner, partner in Norwegian Rain, Alexander Heller, and we do raincoats. Um, the reason why we do that is because we live in this city of Bergen, which is like the west coast of Norway. Beautiful, picturesque place. It's amazing. Um, but we have seven mountains that surround the city, and there's a sea on this side. So practically the water evaporates, comes along as clouds, and they just drop back down again. So the rain just sits right into the city. So it rains two or three days. Now, for someone that lives there, you realize that you either wait for that dry day to look a bit stylistic, or you find a way to actually forget about the weather, you know? <laughs> 
So, so we decided to do the latter. We thought, you know, if we decide to take my tailoring background, start making raincoats without any um, compromise on style, on functionality. So you're going to be dry either way, and it's going to look cool either way. All you have to do is just put it on every day, and when the rain comes, you just pop your hood. So the rain actually is a bonus. You know what I mean? The raincoat is what um, the coat itself does the job that you need any other coat to do. So that's, that's how this is. And this is going to be 10 years next year when we launched it internationally. So we're going to be celebrating in, in Paris, in, in Oslo, in Tokyo, all around the world. Um, to, to, to practically pat ourselves on the back for all the hard work we put into it, you know. So that is the raincoat. And then there's T. Michael, which is practically myself um, with my tailoring background. So I create suits and shirts and, and I do bags and I do shoes and I do sunglasses. And, and, and I like to explain that everything that I like to wear or everything that I wear is actually T. Michael. Um, and everything that I make that is not waterproof is T. Michael. <laughs> Otherwise, it's uh, Norwegian rain. Yeah. Exactly. Um, obviously, the time also moved along, and we started doing some work in, in Tokyo, in Japan. And, and um, after a few years work with, with, with what we did, um, I met this amazing man um, called Yajima-san, who works for this company, Yamato Company, uh, which practically owns about 140 stores in the whole of Japan. Um, they've been doing kimono since 1916, and these guys are solid. You know, this is like solid traditional kimono, and they're very revered in in um, in Japan. But it, it, when you meet this guy, you know this guy's different. You know, he wears kimonos every day with a leather belt, broad uh, leather obi belt. Uh, he wears a, a hat, he wears bow tie, and he's got cowboy boots on. It's like he's taking all the things he likes and put them together in one look. That's the kind of person I want to work with, you know? Uh, so he asked me if I was interested in, in uh, revamping um, the kimonos for them, if I wanted to come in and, and create a, a new, vibrant sort of um, kimono for them. Introduced me to his son, um, uh, Yajima San Jr., um, and then we started working together. And then we, we, we launched the first one in Italy, in Florence, and that Pitti Uomo, which is like the biggest trade show for men's wear in the world. And then times has moved on. We probably on the seventh season now. Um, the tea kimonos, as we call them, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's selling quite a lot. Um, but the beautiful thing about the tea kimono is that it's introduced people into the traditional Japanese kimono world. Uh, so more and more people are ordering the traditional kimono from them as well, which obviously is is the whole idea of what uh, we did to to introduce a kimono as a staple in every man's, wor uh, every man's wardrobe kind of thing. So this is, this is like the overall um, um, description in 10 minutes of what I did. <laughs> Great. So yeah. I realized that mm. uh, each of these range mm. sort of uh, caters to uh, some sort of a locality. Correct. Uh, for instance, if the rain code is because of rain, wearing the kimono because of your experience in Tokyo, Tokyo. Mm. If I were to ask you to create something from with Ghana in your mind, yes, yes, what yes. would you come up with? Oh, there's so many things we want to come up with. I mean, it's it's um, that the, um, the minefield of of, of uh, cultural artifacts and cultural history it's is vast. So there's so much money can create. But the whole idea is, you know, it's not just digging and taking something out. The point is to find something that is relevant, where you can transport it slowly from from what it is as a traditional piece into something that is new, but still has that uh, link to what it was as a traditional piece. Um, so I don't know what I'll do, but, but I'm sure there's so much to pick up from it. Um, having said that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on this project now where we're going to be working on the next, uh, the spring, summer 21 uh, tea kimono version. Um, and I've been trying so many dyeing techniques from, from, um, from Japan. And they've got this one called a Chusin, which is like, it's been done for like maybe 300 years now. Um, the beautiful thing about it, obviously, has uh, links to Ghanaian um, prints as well. Um, it's done differently, but it could have, a, there's a sense of similarities in it. Um, so my idea is to find some uh, symbol, um, either made by myself, made by some artist I will collaborate with, um, that would have the same elements as all Ghanaian and craft um, symbols, 
and then translate that into that. But I, I, I don't like the idea of taking something that already exists and put it into something new. I want to be inspired by what is already there so I can create my version of it and take it forward into the future because I think the whole thing about tradition is, the reason why it's a tradition is because it's moved slowly with people and the moment tradition dies and is not moving, it becomes obsolete, no one wants it. Um, so you cannot be con you're conservative about, about uh, traditions, you have to be vibrant about it and push into contemporary, to contemporary times so it grows in a very organic way. So um, there's a lot um, I, of, of, of things in my mind and my heart that I want to bring out, but it's all about finding the right balance for it and then placing it right, and then people look at it and go, oh wow, how come I didn't think about it before? But it's a lot of work, you know how this works, right? So when you're creating, uh, what, what do you look like? What, what guides you test, in terms of test and all of that? Mm. Uh, what, what, what do you look up for? I mean, I, 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 I like um, natural fibers. So I work a lot of with, with, with uh, things like cotton, uh, wool, um, silks, um, uh, cashmere, uh, llama. Um, and every, every fabric should have a certain um, tactile uh, thing about it. It's all about tactility. It's about mm -hmm. being able to touch it and feel it's alive in a way. Um, and then, so when you transform it, um, even though the, the fabric itself is almost done, you have to take it and, and, and help it in a way to, to bring out the ideas I have in your head, which sometimes is, um, is very difficult to, um, to figure out what you want until you're halfway through the project. And you know what? Sometimes you like, <sighs> you put it in the bin and then you smile very too much yourself. You go outside, you curse yourself, whatever you do. But you come in again and then you, you, know, you persevere and then you keep going. Because at some point, it will give. And when it gives, you know, you know, you, you know you've got it. And then when you present as a people, the response is usually, um, wow, I've never seen that before. Whether people like it or not is another story. Mm -hmm. but, but something that should be unique in its um, appearance is, is what I think people should strive for in today's uh, design, architecture, whatever, you know, um, in, in every creativity, uh, in, every, in every, every creative field, per se. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So what, what have been your personal highlights? Uh, personal highlights. You're talking about design, I suppose. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, I suppose tiki mono is one of the beautiful things that we did because, you know, when I when I did it, it was something that we worked so deep into it that we didn't actually think about what people were going to say or think about it. Is when you launch it, you're thinking, oh shit, what did we just do? You know, uh, are people going to like this? People going to hate it? And then it's it's won an award. Um, that's number one. Number two was embraced by the whole Japanese um, kimono um, community. Um, and the third bit, which is amazing, is that next year at the Victorian Albert uh, Museum in London, um, end of February, that's the 29th of February, this, this, um, this new exhibition that they're going to put up called Kimono from Kyoto to Catwalk. Now the tea kimono is going to be part of that, which, you know, I mean, I think like every creative person, if your piece goes into a museum, then you know you know you've done something right. So that that is like um, that's something that um, I'm proud of. Obviously, Norwegian Rain as well has has won many awards. We've broken many barriers, um, and we've set the tone for what raincoats are supposed to be today. I mean, if you go back when we started, there was no raincoat brands in the market that had anything to offer. But we saw sort of trail a uh, blazer trail and gave people an idea. Um, that you can actually make good design from the most boring idea ever, you know. Um, so that also is, is, is a proud moment, um, plus, 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 you know. And uh, when you were speaking earlier about where we can find you, you mentioned the shops in yeah. Paris, all of that. Mm. When are we getting a shop in Ghana, if you will? And what, what, what is your plans for Ghana? Yeah, uh, we have the short stores in, in Paris, Oslo, Bergen and Tokyo. Um, at the moment, I'm just here, um, I call it sightseeing, but, but you know, I'm obviously looking at what is uh, relevant and what one should know. Uh, but at this moment, I'm more on a, on a mentoring kind of trip. I think uh, what would give me much more is to be able to help people find their direction um, to, 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 to achieve their goals in a way, because um, I've had opportunity of being in so many different countries and so many different cities and work with so many creative people that sometimes you take for granted that there are people that don't have the opportunity. Uh, by the same time, I've also seen people that don't need too much 
to create magical stuff. So I think my job, as I look at it, is to be able to, to, to um, captivate people, inspire people, give them good ideas, um, uh, motivate them, and be a mentor to help them gain and put Ghana on the map out there. Um, and not to look out to work in, but to look in and get it out. Great. Uh, I'll put it in the spot a little bit. Uh, mm. I, you realize that a lot of designs from, or people only consider uh, African designs being uh, the ones that have this wax print. Uh, do you f think that the, the way to go is it limiting in terms of uh, pre very much on the global stage? Are you sure you want me to? You want to go into this uh, <laughs> bombshell right now? Now it's 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 a very good question. But, you know, I've I've been questioning this for a very long time um, because I've had people from different parts of the world meet me at various times in different interviews from magazines around the world, and and this is the same question that crop up. Um, so what is Ghanaian about your design? You know that will that will crop up. And I only have one answer, and I give them the same answer every time. Everything you see that I do is Ghanaian. It's not like there's one little thing that will come up because it's got a print on it, and that's Ghanaian. The way I think, the way I build things up, it's Ghanaian in its uh, originality. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to limit myself to a certain color or fabric to, to, to feed your um, insecurities on your um, ignorance, in a way. Um, but at the same time, if you feel your... your um, uh, your calling is to work with, with prints, uh, which um, one can um, argue about what is Ghanaian or not, uh, as well and so forth. We, we, can, we can keep going for like the whole evening in a way. But, but if you decide to work with Adin Kra prints, which is practically Ghanaian, mm -hmm. um, to work with a Kenta cloth, which is absolutely Ghanaian, that is beautiful. Um, and it's your way, you have to find the way, to, like we talked about before, mm -hmm. to move it forward into the future without destroying the past, right? It's all about that. Um, but just the same way Ghanaian architects are building buildings uh, with techniques from the past, but it doesn't look like a hut, doesn't mean they're not building something that's Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, you should look forward. You should, you should try and be um, open-minded, pick up the stuff that we have that are valuable, the things we have that are not worth anything. Please, let it be and, and move things forward because it's, it's a whole... Um, we want to be better at what we have. We actually, we want to make what we have much better and much more valuable because we believe in it. But if it's not worth it and it's, um, uh, it's taking away our ability to, to reach certain levels, um, then we should drop that and adopt certain things that will help us as well. So it's a nice little balance. And um, you know, I'd love to have a conversation with various people about this um, because I have a strong feeling about it. Um, I respect and other people's opinions about it, but this is my opinion. So, Great. so uh, what should we look up for uh, from T. Michael next year? Oh, next um, year. <laughs> yes, next year is going to be as amazing as this year or the year before that. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. You know, it's like I said, it's all about consistency. I, I like doing what I do and, and I'm, I'm uh, passionate about it. So I will tell you guys to watch this space because some good stuff coming. All right. Uh, we will keep an eye out and uh, enjoy your, your days in Ghana. Thank you very much. Hopefully, uh, you're able to impact a lot of knowledge onto people within the space when you meet them. Or vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.